current Islamic cleric Sheikh Ahmed Gumi has declared that bandits currently troubling the northern part of Nigeria are going nowhere. <laughs> According to Gumi in a post on his known Facebook page on Monday morning titled Zamfara, the flaring of crisis, military action against criminal men and bandits will not solve the security challenge but will only worsen the situation. The controversial Islam preacher was reacting to the recent perceived military sources over bandits at Zamfara Forest. Gumi's full post reads, Every time they candle the fire of war, Hala don't distinguish it, but they even strive to mis do mischief on health, and Allah loveth not those who do mischief. Zafara State is unique in many aspects. In early 2000 AD, the state enacted a wide fire of state constitutional amendment that accommodated the application of Sharia law beyond personal law, for example, marriages, divorce, and inheritance. To include Islamic criminal law, it was well received by the local populace with 11 other northern states adopting it. However, it goes without saying that the international community ruled by leaders that are promoting some domi and lesbianism in the government were at the forefront of fighting it. In a short time, it becomes political and fizzled away. If such Sharia implementation move had concentrated in illiteracy and economy empowerment, the kind of which we see in Southern Arabia, with its rich resources, Zamfara would have become a shining example of the blend of a religiously modern state, proud of its development and modesty. Unfortunately, it turned out to become the den of criminality and instability in the region. From the blues in 2000, cattle wrestling became rampart. Most of the cattle wrestled were headed to the south in trailers where they are sold and slaughtered. These massive movements of wrestled carts, carters greatly reduced their population. Most of the wrestling first affected the rural herdsmen, and it became more elaborate in the northwestern region. Herdsmen were left with only, only, only three options, to join the wrestlers or to pay tributes to wrestlers for protection, or lose their cattle. In 2014, the military intervention in Burini Iguari Forest to fight cattle wrestling changed the S-men into a res resistance movement, as many innocent Fulani Ruga settlements were murdered, men, women, and children in hundreds. By 2015, banditry has replaced cattle rearing that is becoming nearly impossible Drugs were introduced into the herdsmen that are known to be illiterate or semi-illiterate. The reaction of the town local vigilantes, a natural reaction to any communal aggression in self-defense, pitched the herdsmen against the local ruler hermit villages and adjacent towns to the forest as they are lynched and made where never the enter market. Therefore, everybody became an enemy and a target. Fulanese and other tribes, Muslims and non-Muslims, were equally kidnapped for a ransom, most of which goes to buying weapons. Profiling of Fulani herdsmen became another motivate factor of more resi resistant, resistance sorry, and more kidnappings, which has now led to their to the monster the nation is facing today. We should also know that because of their educational status and lack of effective, effective on-field leadership, they have faced untold hardship at the hands of authorities where they were extorted and stereotyped. It has been imprinted in the cycle of nomadic pastorists that the authorities and their town dwellers are evil people that should be 
resisted because they have no place to secure justice for their cases, no matter how innocent they may be. With their acquisition of weapons, they realized how easy it became to be monsters of their body, the forest, where no authorities can venture into. This has embedded them to further attack people for more ransoms to sustain their newfound reality. Now, with the approving of government to take more military actions of an already ugly situation whereby they were left so amazed weapons, a huge military budget that is almost drilling the economy to stand still. In the purchase of fight, fighter aircraft and conducting military operations in the region has become to the authorities to in, in their circulations a necessity. Unfortunately, this is no solution or wisdom. When you don't have the monopoly of the instrument of violence, then dialogue has the monopoly of resolving the conflict. This is what the UN is all about. For example, roundtable solution of conflict. What we are seeing is more than just criminals and criminality. Yes, it may have started as such, but like any conflict, it is dynamic. The danger we are facing now is ideological, changing the narrative. They are trying hard to infiltrate the herdsmen, and we know their objectivities. They want to destroy home governments by fighting the military, and now in the recent cajoling of local populations, they have tormented before to join them in the struggle. Let us face the reality. These herdsmen are going nowhere and they are already in battle gear. And we know our military very well. So before things get messy, we need cold brains to handle this delicate situation. It's common sense that if you allow your neighbors to be your enemy, you are already conquered because they can easily be used against you by other forces. We see now the herdsmen are ultimately used to destabilize the region and even depopulate it. Military actions in the past have worsened the situation, stimulating herdsmen resistance. Any more action will push them closer to religious fanatism. It gives them protection from decrediting them as thieves and also reinforces their mobilization of gullible young unemployed youth as we saw with ph so guys if i had it now i'm gonna drop it here what's your take on this hit the comment section <laughs> and don't forget to give us a thumbs up shai gumi said bandits in nigeria are going nowhere thank you very much for always stopping by bye for now